Welcome to JSE's Flying and to the second part of my video log. Can I transition completely as a Windows user to macOS on the Apple Silicon? Welcome to JSE's Flying and welcome to the second part of my video log. If I can completely transition to my new MacBook Pro on the Apple Silicon as a long-term Windows user. In the first part that's linked up here, I talked about all the hardware setup of that MacBook and how to set it up here on my desk. By the way, if you have missed that, I strongly recommend you subscribe my channel and click the bell for notifications so you don't miss another part. So, but as I have set it up right now with the hardware connections, everything, it's time to talk about software, right? And I'd like to check all the things that I did on Windows. Can I do it the same speed, quality and same comfort on macOS with the Apple Silicon? Um, or do you need like parallels or crossover, some kinds of translation layer or virtual machine or to, to, to have it running? Obviously, there's so much software out there and especially the older software, specific software that might need a virtual machine, a virtual Windows, um, because obviously on Apple Silicon, as its ARM architecture, you cannot just have dual boot macOS or Windows as boot camp. For instance, one of the software that I use, obviously for video editing, um, that's easy. I already used iMovie, that's part of macOS, that's download for free if you have a Mac, so that's easy. Um, I downloaded the trial of Final Cut Pro, that's Apple software, and obviously as that's one of the leading video editing software from Apple itself, it's heavily, heavily tuned to Apple Silicon, to Apple AI, some features are already in the latest version, so video editing, as far as I could check, all major software suits are either for Windows or for Mac. So that should be any problem at all to have video editing on a Mac. Same audio producing. I'm using Presonus Studio and that software obviously is either for Windows or for Mac and all the hardware connectors, like my audio controller, everything works instantly on macOS as the software also is for macOS. Fruity Loops, Cubase, all the major music production seats are also Windows or Mac and one of the, one of the biggest audio production suites is Logic Pro that is also software from Apple itself and obviously that's out of the box, working on the latest macOS using Apple AI features and so on. So video production and audio production shouldn't be any problem at all, except you have very specific filters or add-ons, tools or whatever that require Windows. But for the general user, I think audio and video, there's nothing that speaks against Apple and nothing that speaks against Apple Silicon. But as I said, what about regular stuff? You get a form sent for your taxes or from your employer and you have to fill that out, you have to request something and so on and that is either PDF, okay, that's easy, Acrobat Reader is also there for macOS. Um, but what is with like Office, Microsoft Office, Word, Excel, Publisher, PowerPoint and whatever. That is one of the parts I'd like to test. So let's fire it up and see for the first part how the Office files can be handled under macOS. So let's talk about Office apps. Like for my employer, for the government, Anywhere where I have to send an application, school, taxes, whatever, I need forms, I have to fill out forms and they are either PDF, that's easy, Acrobat files, um, 
but most of the time when you have to fill out a form or application, in my case at least, it's Microsoft Word files. If I get a spreadsheet uh, at work, that is most of the case Microsoft Excel. So there are Apple apps for that, like Numbers, Pages and Keynote, that is Excel, Word and PowerPoint from Microsoft. And there are also Google applications that work with Google Drive, like Google Docs, Google Spreadsheets and so on. I have some examples here of files um, that I use uh, in Windows and I'd like to see how can you do that on a Mac without like emulating Windows and installing Microsoft Office for Windows on that Windows. And let's go to the Microsoft page and obviously they have Microsoft 365 for Mac, which is a subscription model where you have to pay either monthly or yearly to have access to the online apps of Word, PowerPoint, Excel and so on. And if we say for home, we don't need the business stuff. There we see, okay, that is a yearly or monthly plan for either the family or for personal. So that is at least $70 a year for the personal subscription to use Office. I'm not sure what I paid for Office a few years ago for Windows, but let's see if maybe Microsoft also has like an offline regular version of Office. And so that is $70 a year for one person for five devices that you can log in or sign in at once. So, oh yeah, here down here you see the family or the personal subscription. And here we have Office Home 2024 as a one-time purchase for PC or Mac. So that's about twice as much as you pay per year for the personal subscription. So if you use it two years, you have about $140 spent. So in the third year, you would have spent more than with a one-time purchase. But obviously, as you can see down here, um, you can install it on one, uh, one PC or Mac and you don't have any cloud storage, you don't have multiple devices, you don't have Outlook, but macOS has, a, in my opinion, quite good email program, that's Apple Mail. Okay, we don't have any technical support. Microsoft Defender as an antivirus software. I don't think you need an antivirus suite on a Mac. Microsoft Editor Clipchank, Microsoft Teams, okay. Okay, you get OneNote as a note-taking app, you don't get access, the database program, but as you can see here, access is PC only. There is no access version for Mac, neither in the subscription model or in the offline model. And you don't get Microsoft Forms. So all the other stuff I never used in the Windows version, so I don't think I will need that in the Mac version. But with the Office Home offline version, I could use everything offline. I don't have to go through the online versions. So, okay, let's uh, open that link in a new tab to learn more. Okay, there we go. Uh, key benefits, la la la. Okay, looks good. That's $149.99. And there is also Office Home and Business. Okay, let's see what this is. That is $249.99, so let's see what the difference is. Okay, the difference is, okay, you have Word, Excel and PowerPoint in the home version and you have Word, Excel, PowerPoint and Outlook in the home and business. So you pay $100 for the email program. I already have one in macOS, I don't need that, that's fine. Obviously, if you have the calendar and other Outlook features you use in Windows, that might be worth spending $100 more. Or you say, okay, I just go with a subscription model. So I don't know if I want to spend $150 for that. If I can just use Pages, Numbers, Keynote for free on Apple, you can write everything there. And there's another thing you could use Google. 
Google Drive, I use Google Drive a lot for all my files as a cloud storage. And Google Slides is like PowerPoint, Sheets is like Excel and Docs is like Word. I have some Microsoft Office files, Excel table, PowerPoint presentation and Word. One Word page that has designs and one that has just text. And so for instance, when I open up the Word design in Google Drive, it opens Google Docs. That's about the way it looks with Office, with Microsoft Word. If I open up the same file in Google Drive, Word Design, it opens it with Apple Pages. And that looks quite similar. Let me just get this beside here. It looks quite similar to the Google version. But the problem is that as soon as I change something in here and I want to save it, it wants to save it uh, let's save it for instance in downloads save and when I go to downloads now it saved this but when we say get info it saved it as a pages document so whenever pages opens an office file the same is with numbers or with um, the keynote with the PowerPoint. When the keynote opens PowerPoint files, it cannot save it in the original file type. So it always saves it then as a pages document, as a numbers document or as a keynote presentation document. So you cannot work with Microsoft Office files with the Apple software. So let's do another thing and um, I have an Excel table here. If I open that, it opens it with numbers and there are some formulas in here that are right now not correctly formatted. As you can see, let me just maybe zoom that a little bit into. So you see these numbers all look weird and if I maybe add one hour 30 here, it starts calculating everything wrong. These formulas work in Excel. And the same here, when I say file save, it saves as the same file name, where in downloads, but when I save it and I open the downloads folder, this one, is a numbers spreadsheet, as it says down here. It's not an Excel file anymore. And so I found another way. If I have it in my Google Drive, as you can see, I just worked my way here in my, in my uh, file, in my Word file. And as soon as I'm done, it says up here, when I change anything, you see saving and it says save to drive. If I now close this, you see the word design file is still a docx file. It's still a word file. So if I open it up, you see all the stuff I've wrote in here, but it's still, as you can see up here, a docx file. It's still office, Microsoft Word format. And so the same goes when I go into the Excel table. If I start this, you can see it's still Excel as X. It's still Excel file. And let me just zoom in here a little bit. So if I enter now, one hour, 30 minutes, you can see that all calculations, all the formulas that are up here, some formula and so on do work 
and the file or the format of the durations that I calculate here, like if I enter here 2 hours 45, you can see it correctly adds everything up and it still works as with Microsoft Excel. And it's already saved. If I close it, you can see it's still an Excel table. So if I have Microsoft Office files or I get Office files and I need to work with it and maybe give it back as an Excel or Word file, you can use Google Drive and the Google Docs, Google Sheets, Google Slides, and they can handle Office files. And otherwise, if I want to transform everything into the Apple ecosystem, I just start using numbers, pages, and Keynote. If you go to File and you say Export to Word, export your document, then you can export it to PDF, to Word, plain text, RTF, and so on. And so this was it for the second part of the video log. If you have some comments, ideas, questions or complaints, just give me a comment below the video or better, join my Discord server. The link is down in the video description and join the community and let's talk and discuss there. Otherwise, if you haven't yet, I strongly recommend you subscribe my channel, click the bell for notification. You don't miss the next part because I still got some topics in my mind, at least gaming, some encryption stuff, archiving and whatever just hits my mind until I do the next video. So until the next part, see you soon. Have a good time. Bye bye.